This week, find out how to add multiple Y-axes to your single panel figure. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to show you how to put multiple Y axes on a single, single panel figure. This is very useful for if you have data that are in vastly different ranges, but you want to show them on the exact same panel in your figure. Now I'm going to work with a figure that has a single panel. You could do this same strategy on figures with multiple sub panels. For example, when I was doing my dissertation work, I would often generate figures that had three or four subpanels, each having two Y axes. The principle is exactly the same. So to start off with, we're going to do imports, of course. That's what we always do with Python because we have to import things from all these different modules to bring in different pieces of functionality. It's one of the wonderful things about the Python ecosystem, but one of the ones that's also most commonly misunderstood by beginners. So we're gonna use NumPy and matplotlib. I'm going to go ahead and use the notebook magic to show figures in line here. And then we need to create some fake data to plot. So for x, I'm just going to use the range from 0 to 99, so 100 long. For my first y variable, we're going to use the random module again. So remember, this gives us between 0 and one, non-inclusive of one. We're going to want 100 random numbers there. And then for y2, we're going to do the same thing. So random dot random 100, and then I'm gonna multiply it by 100. So we're two orders of magnitude different here. So if we look at what we got out of that, in this case, I'm just going to quickly call plt.plot xy1 and plt.plot xy2. You see it's random data, but here we range from zero up to one, and here we range from zero up to 100. So if we were to plot these on one figure, it's going to look a little bit strange. So let's go ahead and do that. Here I'm creating a figure that is 10 by 8 inches. And then we're going to create our axes object. So one row, one column, first panel here. And then I'm going to call x.plot, xy1, and xy2. So now you see the problem. We have data that's a random distribution, but it has two orders of magnitude difference in its range. So our first data series down here looks very flat. In fact, we could say this is a low noise data set if we were to assume that these are the exact same variable on the exact same range, whereas this data set is higher and much noisier, we could say. So that could cause some misinterpretation here, or maybe it's just two totally different variables, say temperature and relative humidity, where the ranges are not linked at all, but we want to show them on the same chart. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create another axes object, but in this case, it's not going to be a subplot. So up here, I'm going to say ax2 is ax, our first axes object, dot twin x. So this says I want the exact same x range. No matter what I do to the x range on the axes object, I want axis 2 to mirror that. And now I'm going to change our second variable to plot on axis 2. So now if we run this, we actually have a hard time seeing the difference here because they're both plotting blue. They're on different axes objects. So we're going to go ahead and change the color. We'll just follow the default color cycler here. I'm going to use tab orange. OK, now it's clear that there are two different data series here. You see on the left side, we have our 0 to 1 range y-axis, and on the right side, we have a y-axis ranging from 0 to 100. Okay, so that helps us quite a bit. 
but we still don't know which of these y-axes goes with which colored variable here on the plot. So there could be some labels added. That would be one way to help this. Let's go ahead and axe.set y label. And we're going to creatively call it variable one. I'm going to go ahead and specify a font size of 16, something a little bit larger than the default. X2, set Y label, variable 2, font size of 16. All right, so that's a little bit better. We still have the problem, though, of we're putting cognitive load on our readers to say which one of these variables do I expect to be between 0 and 1? Which one of these variables do I expect to be between 0 and 100? Maybe one is relative humidity, one is mixing ratio, one is temperature, or one is some kind of normalized variance. They could figure it out, definitely, but it's extra load that we don't want to impose on them. The first step we could take here would be to try to make the color of the y-axis label match whatever the data variable is colored on the plot. So ax dot, in this case we want to get the y-axis part of that. Then we're going to grab the label, and we're going to say set color. We're going to use the first color in the color cycler, tab blue. That's what it's defaulted to. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, put it down here. X2 dot y axis label set color. And this one is going to be tab orange. Now I'll run that again. It's immediately much more obvious. So this is a much easier figure to look at, but we can do better than that. So ax dot tick params. We can specify the axes. We could say x, y, or both. In this case, we just want to work on y. And the colors is going to be tab blue. Go ahead and copy and paste that down here. Tab orange for axis two. Again, if you were doing this programmatically, uh, it would probably be wise to go ahead and make this automated a little bit more automated than this copy and paste, use variables for the colors and so on. Anyway, now we have colored labels and tick marks here. So we're already doing even better. The last thing that we might want to change the color of is what's called the spine. So in this case, it's going to be ax dot spine. We're going to specify the left spine here. We're going to use the set color method tab blue. Now I'm actually going to make this ax two. I know that's a little confusing. It's because we draw axis two on top of axis one. Remember, matplotlib plots are layered, sort of like taking multiple transparencies, if you remember those, drawing on them and layering them on top of each other. So axis two is what's going to be on top. I want to set its left spine to be blue. Copy down here. We want to set its right spine to be orange. If you didn't leave the top one here as just ax dot spine left, you would just get a black spine because there would be a blue spine under it and then a black spine from axis two drawn on top. And what we see here is that I forgot an S spines. Now we run that again and we see we have blue spine elements and orange spine elements here. So this is a much easier plot to look at and identify exactly which variable goes with which. It also allows us to plot variables with vastly different ranges on the same panel of a given plot. I hope that you found this useful. Don't forget to click like and subscribe down below. You can find us on Twitter. We're at MetPy and at Unidata. You can also find us on Facebook just by searching for Unidata. We also have support and other helpful links in the description of the video. Thank you for joining me on this week's MetPy Monday.